today we're back in Ipswich um, to meet up with a friend. We're gonna go for a walk with the dogs back at Loki's old stomping grounds. He loves this trail. been working on installing our nation's alternator. It's a 280 amp second alternator so it will run in addition to the alternator that was installed on the van uh, from the factory uh, and it will basically be totally isolated from the van's 12 volt electrical system. I don't think there's any tie-ins at all. Let me show you what I did because pretty soon you pretty much won't be able to see any of it at all. Um, so while I've got it apart, I'll kind of show you where stuff goes in case anybody else is trying to install one of these in the same van. I think the best way to do this is to start with the alternator itself. Um, the installation instructions were actually pretty straightforward for that. Um, so I don't know that this will be really helpful for anyone, but if you just want to see where it is, we are underneath the bottom of the engine. This is the oil pan here and there's a bracket that bolts right to the side of the oil pan. And it basically sits right below the, uh, the original alternator. I don't know if the camera can get there. The factory one is right above it. You can kind of see it right there. This is the new one. So there's a few brackets involved and you gotta swap out one pulley or you, you install a couple additional pulleys um, and you remove the original fan belt and you install a different one that has a tensioner. The factory fan belt is like a stretch belt. Uh, from the top, there's really not much you can see on the engine side, but this is the cable path that I ultimately found. This is uh, the passenger side frame rails right there. So the alternator, you can just see right at the tip of my finger. Uh, all the wires coming off of the field, the stator, the charge wire, the ground, temp sensor, all comes basically straight up from the alternator. And then it goes, juts back just a little bit on that frame rail. And then there's a, there's a vertical panel right here. So it's kind of just tucked in against that and it's actually zip tied to it there. So it's up, up off of that floor by about an inch or two. And then we come up here and then we just join uh, a factory harness coming up the side wall, the inner fender. And I put some captive nuts to hold this fuse block. It's a, there's a 300 amp uh, class T fuse in there. And then I made this short, well, it's short here, but this is actually a long wire, but it just jumps right here and it goes through the um, factory wire pouch thingy along with the rest of the wires. So they got this little like boot and I don't know if you can tell, but inside there, it's like a big hunk of foam. So it just kind of squishes and there was a zip tie around all this to kind of pinch it off nice and tight which i gotta reinstall this is a wire from uh the voltage regulator it needs to see uh, alternator output uh, positive signal and then i think this is field stator ground and somewhere in there this gray wire is the um, alternator temp inside the passenger's footwell area. Underneath the floor and everything, there's a, there's a little factory tool kit. They give you like a tow hook, a lug wrench, a star driver thing, and there's a screwdriver right there. So underneath that is this fuse block. So all my wires come in here. I had a ton of extra um, alternator temp sensor, but this was like a ready-made harness with two ends on it. So I just left it and coiled it there. Figured that was a decent spot for it. 
Um, everything that's small passes underneath the fuse block. There's like a, there's a channel under there. And then it comes here and it goes into this wire trough. The charge wire from the alternator can't make that bend and I don't think it can fit underneath that fuse block. So I just snaked it around the front. I just um, kind of filed off the sharp edges on the front here and here, just cause that's, that has to sit like pretty tight to that in order for the tool kit to sit down uh, snug on there. And I also cut off a couple of um, tabs on the back of the toolkit. But once the toolkit goes in, you can't tell that anything has been modified at all. And then this also, this is a 4 aught wire. It fits inside this factory channel with this huge bundle. There's a metal plate that goes over this. And then it goes underneath this plastic tray. And uh, we go a couple directions from here. Some uh, voltage regulator wiring goes underneath the driver's seat because there's a um, engine running signal uh, tapping point in there. It's right in this corner. There's a little uh, three wire block that has, um, it's basically like a junction block for a few different signals. That's outlined in the um, body and equipment guidelines for this generation. Um, so that was that was pretty handy that that was right there. Um, and if you don't know and you need to know, that's pretty much where it is. I'm not gonna lift that seat up to show you, but if you just tip the seat back like this, then you'll be able to get to everything underneath there. And like I said, it's pretty much right in this corner. Uh, it's behind the auxiliary battery charging uh, wiring, which is also right there. Um, Anyways, the rest of it comes into here. We had a factory auxiliary battery and it sat right here. And this is the battery tray, which is kind of out of position right now, but I wanted to show you uh, a couple of little modifications that I did to it in a little bit more detail. I put these uh, four quarter 20 threaded rods here. Um, they got a nut on the bottom and a nut right there to kind of hold them. Although this one keeps coming loose. I don't know why. Um, but I made a top plate that that basically clamps down our battery right to this. So this is 170 amp hour battery from Renogy fits in there like perfectly. We also have a wake speed WS500 volt alternator voltage regulator there. I just stuck it in that little pouch with uh velcro there uh, we also have this little um relay pouch and a little diagnostic port there is a little four pin connector the relay block and the diagnostic port are for our um diesel fired furnace uh, so it's a little bit it's a separate system that i'm trying to install at the same time i just want to get all of this engine bay wiring stuff done but i may as well show that now um I just, it's got a little mounting bracket for both of those pieces and I, it's its just got a little plastic push pin and I super glued this little tabby and those fit there perfectly. So we'll be able to uh, check blown fuses like right here and if we need diagnostics, it'll be right here. We'll probably have to lift the seat up to get to them, but that's all right. But I'm also installing the um, shunt for our alternator here. The ground connection from the batteries to the chassis has to be shunted so that you can measure current flow. So I'm gonna put it right here, and I think it'll be a real short run from the battery negative terminal, which is about where my fingertip is. Well, it's a little bit lower, like right here. Goes right here, and then right to the right to the ground stud on the vehicle. I'll give you a little look at the, um, the battery that's underneath the passenger seat. Uh, from outside, it pretty much looks like nothing happened. And I've always heard that if you've done your job well, no one can tell that you've done anything at all. So that's kind of what I was going for. Uh, this little foam guy doesn't fit quite right because the battery's a little bit taller, but... And now you can kind of see the battery cables are on there. Battery cables are on there, and the shunt is hooked up right there. Here you can see 
the grounds are hooked up there and the charge wires hooked up there and we got a temp sensor just kind of wedged in there i think that's pretty much it for the alternator install I thought that might help if anybody's trying to install a Nation's uh, second alternator kit in the 2020 Sprinter. Inst there's very good instructions for installing the alternator, but there aren't really great instructions for chassis specific electrical integration. And I just wanted to show you what I did uh, in case you need ideas. What dog? <laughs> 